Okay, welcome back to the Eagle Tutorials at www.ece101.com. Today we're going to be going over ad levels and what they mean and what they can be used for. So I have my library open here. I'm going to go in and create a new device. I'm just going to call it an example. Yes. I'm going to add a couple of these guys. Um, you don't really need to worry about what these are. This is just purely for pin count. So I have a package with 12 pins and those four parts give me 12 pins as well. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna come back here and delete one of these. I'm gonna add in a couple of dip switches. This way, I get five gates. So anything, any of these uh, separate parts or whatever you want to call them in here, Eagle refers to these as gates. So in this case, I have five gates uh, for a total of 12 pins. Go ahead and connect these right now. Now, each gate by default is set to have an add level of uh, next so the you can go here and look at the ad levels there's must can next request and always next is the default must means that this gate must absolutely be there for you to use this part you can't remove the must gate until you remove all other gates um, if you have you know a device that you want to always have the power pins displayed this is a good way to display it. Um, that way, anytime you have that device, you have to explicitly wire up the power pins, or it'll at least be there and they'll cause warnings and errors if you don't. So we'll go ahead and set one of these to must. Set that guy to must. Can and request, as far as I can tell, are pretty much the same. I I couldn't really. I've never really seen a difference between the two. I've never seen can used. Um, so I'm not going to go over that here. Next, like I said, is default. Um, request is what you typically see with power pins in Eagle that are uh, implicit. That's why they're called Im they're implicit pins because by default they are wired up to a certain net. Uh, so if their default net is VCC and you have VCC on your board, you're good. Otherwise, you need to go in and request it. You invoke the node or you, you invoke the gate and place it on your schematic and wire it up to the nets that you want your power and ground to be wired to. So we'll go ahead and call this guy right here request. And finally we have always, always is a gate that will be placed always with your first gate. It's, it's kind of a default. It's not, it differs from must in that you can remove it after you've placed it, but when you place your first gate it will always be placed. So we'll call uh, this dip switch over here always. So, if I remember correctly, we have must, uh, next, always, request, and we left this one alone so it should still be next. So, we'll go ahead and save this, exit out. Here I have my schematic. We're going to add that in. Sorry, I know some of these dialogues are off the portion of the screen being recorded. So, there we go. If you remember, we had this one as must, this one as always, and this one by default was next. Now, because of the order I put those on there, this dip switch that I've still got under my cursor here was the next next in line. So its add level was set to next, and it was added after this uh, this device right here, this gate right here. So it's the next one that it prompts you for. So after I place this, it comes up and it's ready to add the same device again. But let's say that I want that other gate on here. Well, I need to come in here to invoke. I can click on any one of these guys and it'll know which device I'm talking about. So I have this request. So go ahead and request it, invoke it, place it on the schematic. There we go. Now I have all five gates from this magical mystery part. Um, what you'll see a lot of are um, quad gates, like a, a quad NAND gate or a quad AND gate. 
Um, you'll see a lot of dual op amps, and in some cases, it's it's easier to just buy you know 100 dual op amp ICs than to go in and buy single op amps. I don't even know if those are available. I don't think I've ever seen one. Um, and a bunch of dual op amps. So a lot of times you'll just buy dual op amps and if you only need one, well, you'll put that same IC on your board anyways. And so in that way, you don't have to be cluttering your schematic with gates that you're not going to use. You know, you look at your schematic and you're like, oh wow, there's all those pins that, you know, they're they're not being used. You know, what's, what's going on? Um, you don't want to add confusion later on down the road, you know, if you look at your schematic 10 months, 18 months from now. So we have all these gates. Well, let's see what we can do. Since this guy's a request, we can get rid of him. And this guy's a next, we can get rid of him. This guy's an always, we can get rid of him. Now this was a re this was a next, and this was a must. So if I click over here, it'll say, oh, you can't do that. So if I come over here and delete this one, and I delete this must gate as well, now it's gone. Now that, that device is is out of my schematic, it's out of my it's out of my board. If I had two musts on there, when I deleted when I delete one of them, it'll delete both of them. Um, so that's you know that that's kind of just to show you how those ad levels work. What they're useful for is you know like I said, if you have two op amps in an IC and you only want to use one, um, showing your power pins or or having them hidden and being implicitly tied to a, a certain net name like VCC and GND. Um, if you have a device with a lot of pins and you know it's it's split out into you know say say ports like if you have a port A, port B, port C, um, you can you can add those individually. It also helps keep your schematic clean. Um, if I undo all those deletes you can see that I can move around any of these freely and so you know if you have a device with say a hundred pins on it you could you know a, a high-end pick or a high-end microcontroller of some sort you can split out the ports so that they're their own gate they're their own schematic symbol and you can place them all over so it kinda cleans up your schematic spreads things out keeps the pins off of there that you're not going to use so I hope it was useful if you have any questions uh, email me, chris at ece101.com, or leave comments on the blog. Whatever you want to know about Eagle, I'll do what I can to help you out. Thanks a lot.